As someone who switches between iPhone and Android devices on almost a daily basis whilst reviewing phone after phone after phone. I thought it was about time I made this much requested video on the definitive guide on switching from iPhone to Android without losing everything. Now this one took a huge amount of time and effort and research, so please do subscribe if you're watching this one. Now according to YouTube, something like 95% of people watching aren't subscribed and it really does help this channel out if you do subscribe so we can continue to make videos like these. So this video is going to be fairly instructional. We're gonna cover off everything from contacts and photos to some trickier things like passwords and Apple Home. Now some of these steps require some steps on your iPhone first and need some time to you know, back up or transfer things like your photos, but we will take them one by one, starting with your photos and videos. Now, this is a mistake that many people often make by just plugging your old iPhone into your new Samsung phone or new Android phone, and then starting the migration wizards, which is a good way to get most of your stuff over. Your photos, your contacts, your calendars, some of your apps, but it can have a habit of leaving things behind. Now, one of those problems is that that wizard only transfers photos and videos stored on your actual iPhone, which if you're signed up to you know, Apple's iCloud service, could mean that most of your photos and videos are actually stored up in the iCloud service, but surprisingly, Apple does actually provide a tool that will migrate all of your photos and videos from iCloud over to Google Photos. So firstly, make sure you actually have a you know, Google account already. Also make sure you have enough space to store all of your data. Now, Apple iCloud has a you know, number of different tiers, whereas Google has the service called Google One, which at the top gives you two terabytes of storage, but you can also then upgrade this up to 30 terabytes of storage, if of course you're happy to pay the uh, privilege of doing so. Now, one more step here before we actually start transferring. You cannot start this process if you have advanced data protection enabled on your Apple account. Now, Advanced Data Protection is a feature that essentially locks your data away from anybody else by setting your own password, your own encryption key that you need to be able to view your data. So because this process requires well, both Apple and also Google to access your data and transfer everything, you'll need to switch this feature off, which you can do. You maybe check this before you do this by going on your iPhone, go to Settings and then iCloud, Advanced Data Protection and just switch this off. Now, I'm not actually going to do this because here in the UK, the government has recently forced Apple to disable this feature. So if I turn this feature off, I can't turn it back on again. Good old UK government. But once you have done this, hop over to privacy.apple.com and sign in on here. Go to transfer a copy of your data and request to transfer a copy of your data. Now here we're going to select iCloud photos and videos. And if you follow this through, it will begin to transfer all of your photos, all of your videos from iCloud to Google Photos and not just the photos stored on your device. Now this process itself can can take anywhere from a few hours to a few days, depending on how much data you have. So just be prepared to wait whilst this completes. But this way, you won't miss any of your photos and videos on your new Android device. Now, next up is contacts and calendars. And this is fairly straightforward. What you do here is download the Google One app on your iPhone. Then you can sign into your Google account on your iPhone and make sure you have backup enabled for your contacts as well as your calendar. Now you can also back up your photos here, which you might want to do if you're going to continue using your iPhone for a while before you fully switch to your Android phone. Since the transfer we did just earlier won't pick up any new photos once that migration has finished. And then when you sign in on your new Android device, it will then pull these contacts, these calendars all across onto your new device. Now, the only problematic thing is if you still have a family member using Apple Calendar. And so the best thing that I've come across here is to either share that Apple Calendar publicly, which you can get the link and then add that into your Google Calendar as a read only calendar. Now, this way you'll still get to see your family calendar, but you won't be able to do anything with it. You can't create or move anything. Or the other way I found was to use an app called Motion, which is a whole separate like calendar application. It is subscription based, I believe, which you can then add Apple 
Apple, Google, Microsoft, and just all sorts of other calendars too, while still retaining access to, you know, making changes in those calendars. Now, one thing you can't do is migrate to your iMessages. You know, good old Apple for sticking that to the, uh, the Android people. Now, there have been a few attempts from people like Nothing and also Beeper, but Apple has always blocked them once they found out. So you need to ensure that you switch off iMessage properly, or you will find that uh, you'll have problems receiving text messages from Apple users because Apple still thinks you're on iMessage and trying to send them to your iPhone when you're not. So go into your settings, apps, messages and disable iMessage here. But also this can sometimes not work properly. So you can actually go to selfsolve.apple.com slash deregister dash iMessage and follow the instructions here to be 100% sure that iMessage has been disabled on your account. Now, next up, one of the most frustrating parts are your iCloud passwords, which are stored in Apple's keychain on the new passwords app. Now, unfortunately for this part of the process, the only current way to do this is by owning a Mac as well. So you either use your own Mac, or if you really have to use a friend's Mac, just create an account, sign into your Apple account from there. And when you are doing this, you just go on your Mac, you can open the passwords app and then export all of your stored passwords as a CSV file. Now be very, very careful here. This is a plain text file that anybody can read and access if they've got their hands on it. It is very, very insecure. So once you are done with this file, make sure it is completely erased, completely deleted from whichever systems you are using, and then empty the cycle bin as well, just to make sure everything is gone, or you just risk, you know, all of your life's passwords getting into the wrong hands. But with that CSV file, you can now import this into your chosen password manager. Now this might be Samsung Pass, might be Google's kind of uh, Google Chrome's password manager. But the only problem with that is that if you then change phone again, like next year, then you have to go through this whole process again. So instead, this is exactly why I always recommend a completely standalone and cross platform password manager. Now I personally Personal favorite is 1Password. I've used them for years and years and years. And with that, I can access my passwords on iOS, on Android, Mac, on PC, even Linux. And if you're watching this video before the 15th of April, then 1Password is currently running a promotion for 25% off a personal subscription and a whopping 50% off a family subscription. Now we actually use the family version of 1Password because, well, whenever my wife can't remember her password for something, I just reset it, then I put it into a shared area. So the next time, you know, she tries signing in on her phone, it just fills it in. But yeah, we keep a ton of stuff in 1Password, a credit and debit cards, two-factor authentication codes, passport information. And as someone who does switch between, you know, Apple and Android, Mac and Windows, it is a huge help having this uh, cross-platform password manager that doesn't then and tie me in to a particular ecosystem. Now, security-wise, they are one of the very best that are out there. And even feature-wise too, they recently released a feature where you can add a location to specific passwords, which will then you know, float these pieces of information to the very top of the app when you're in you know, the right location. So definitely give them a try. Use the links down below for a discount. Now, after the 15th of April, you'll be able to sign up for a free 14-day trial. And a huge thank you to 1Password for making this video possible by sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, so you just import that CSV file into whichever password manager you want to use, but there are still some issues which cannot be solved that easily. Now, the uh, two-factor authentication codes that change like every 30 seconds, those can be kind of difficult to migrate. Now, from the passwords app, you can edit the record and then tap the copy setup URL, which you can then paste this over onto your Android phone and it will add it to your chosen password manager. Now, alternatively, you'll then have to disable them and then reset them up from your new password manager, either, you know, Android or 1Password or whatever it is. Now, my best advice is if you are thinking about migrating in the near future, get 1Password or whichever password manager it is installed on your iPhone right now and start the transition. So when you do eventually move across, you just need to install that password manager, 1Password on your new phone, and then everything, all your passwords, all your two-factor authentication codes, comes with you. Now, similarly, as far as the uh, browser goes, it's kind of the same story with this. If you do it on the desktop, you can then export your Safari bookmarks and then favorites and import them into Chrome or whichever browser you want to use. Now, I personally use Brave browser across all of my devices and I can just install this on any device and then synchronize my browser so I have all the same favorites, all the same settings across everything. Uh, the only thing you might lose out by using a, a third-party browser like Brave is on some of the, say, the Samsung devices, you get the Samsung AI 
Wi-Fi features in the Samsung browser and similarly on the Google Chrome devices on Pixel devices. So just be aware of that. Now, iCloud email is next up. If you've been using iCloud Mail for your email, then you're going to be want to keep your existing email and your new email as well. So the best way to do this is by adding your iCloud Mail account to the Gmail account. So start off by heading to account.apple.com and selecting app specific password. Now here you create a new password and you can call it Gmail. And then from the Gmail app on Android, you can click your avatar, select add another account, select other account, and then enter your iCloud email address and that app specific password that you've just generated. Now you might need to enter that password again as Gmail pulls in the iCloud server details, but then you have access to your iCloud emails from within Gmail. Now music next, this one is pretty easy since you can actually install Apple Music on your Android phone and it actually works really, really well. If you wish, you can just continue using Apple Music on your Android phone, or you can actually migrate your Apple Music playlists over to YouTube Music by once again visiting privacy or privacy.apple.com and following the instructions on here. Or if you want to switch to something else like Spotify, then I can actually recommend a service called Tune My Music, which I've actually used a few times before. Uh, it's free up to 500 tracks each time. So you can kind of work around the pay plan by separating your playlists if you have more than 500 tracks in one playlist, or you can pay like a few bucks to upgrade and remove that restriction. Apple TV, again, this app has recently come across to Android, so you can just download this app and continue watching your yeah, favorite shows, Ted Lasso, Severance Silo, like loads of great shows on there. And to migrate WhatsApp from iPhone to Android, you want to first go into settings, then chats, then chat backup and tap backup, just to make sure you are fully backed up on your iPhone. And then on Android, you download WhatsApp and then just sign into WhatsApp with the same phone number, make sure it's the same number, and it will then allow you to restore all of your old WhatsApp chats and group chats. Again, as long as you are using the same phone number, you can't do this with a different phone number. Now, if you want to use multiple phones with one WhatsApp account, then instead of doing this, you can just link the second phone as a companion device instead, which I've done on, again, I have too many phones, so I generally tend to do that. Now, for apps, the best thing to do for apps is when you do turn on your Android phone and do the whole migration wizards steps thing, let it try to install as many apps as it can. It should go and find as many apps as it can kind of match from the uh, Google Play Store as it does on your iPhone. But it doesn't get all of them. In my experience, it misses quite a few. And whilst it is also likely that apps you use on iOS are available on Android, you'll most certainly need to repurchase any paid for apps. Uh, and that goes for app subscriptions too. Check on the app developers website here, but it's very unlikely, very frustratingly too, to be untransferable. It's actually really annoying. I've been subscribed to Carrot Weather on both iPhone and Android because I keep switching between phones because it is just the best weather app I've come across so far. But I just can't have, you know, one paid subscription to cover both devices. It's super, super annoying. Now, the quickest way to get a list of all of your installed apps is to open up settings and apps on your iPhone. Now, this gives you an A to Z of all of the installed apps, which you can then locate in the Google Play Store. Uh, you can also see all the apps you've ever installed on any device by opening the App Store, clicking on your avatar, apps, my apps, and then this gives you a list, like I've said, of every app you've ever downloaded. Uh, whilst you're here, also back up to subscriptions and then cancel any uh, app subscriptions that you no longer need because you're going to replace them with your Android subscription instead. And now Find My. Find My is actually a really simple one, as in there is no Find My. Um, there's no real replacement. The best thing you could do here is go on to re-add your friends on Google Maps instead. Now, this is actually quite nice because as you are generally like browsing around Google Maps, you'll be able to see if any of your friends are nearby. So, you know, if they just happen to be down the road, you can be like, hey, let's meet up for a coffee. Whereas on iPhone, you have to open a completely separate app called Find My to go and find my friends or devices. And with that said, if you do have any Air Tags, then you're going to need to switch these out for Galaxy Tags instead. So yeah, that's a bit of a expense to spend there. Now, as far as iCloud Drive goes, Apple doesn't yet provide a way to easily export all of your files at once. But as long as you don't have too many files to copy, the best way is to install the Google Drive app on your iPhone, then click the plus button, upload files, and then you can browse and you can just basically tick all of the folders, all of the files, and which will then start uploading all of those Apple files and folders over to Google Drive. Now, this may take quite a while, it just depends on your connection speeds. So do be sure to check the status of the upload from the progress screen in the app. Now, alternatively, you can also do this too from your Mac by just dragging and dropping your files over from the Apple file system or finder over to Google Drive. And once uploaded, all of your files should now be waiting for you on the Google Drive app on whichever new Android devices 
you choose to use. Now for notes, this actually does get a bit tricky and there are a few ways to do this, but the best I can see is when you have a bunch of notes that you want to transfer is to open up your Apple Notes on your iPhone, select all of your notes, and then if you tap and hold and then drag them into your Apple Files app to dump them all there as uh, rich text documents. Now it will take a few seconds or maybe a few minutes to do this. Again, it just depends on how many you've got. But once that is done, you can next transfer your iCloud Drive using the step before this to Google Drive, and then you can Unfortunately, one by one, open these files on your Android device and then copy and paste the content. I know, kind of sucks, but unfortunately, this is one that's unreasonably difficult to transfer. Now, the Apple Wallet app can hold your passes for things like cinema tickets and restaurant uh, loyalty cards. Within the Apple Wallet app, you just open the pass and click the share button and then pop it somewhere. You can open it on your new phone, like in Google Drive. And then, of course, again, from your Android phone, open the as a PK pass file, which you then save from your iPhone, open that and then save it into your Google Wallet. Now, payment cards can also be used in Google Wallets. But again, this is just setting up manually from scratch. So just from the Google Wallet app, click add a payment card fill in your card details to add in to Google Pay, you know, exactly the same as you would have to do on your iPhone for Apple Pay. Then for your smart home devices, this is complicated. It's going to very much depend on the type of smart devices you have and the, the protocols that those devices support. Now, this step, again, can get quite tricky and complicated. Now, the very first thing you need to do is create a home in the Google Home app. And then for most devices, you're basically going to need to factory reset them and then repair the device with the Google Home app as long as they support Google Home. Because again, some of the devices, lots of smart home devices only have support for Apple Home. So just be careful with this step. Something I have personally done with a lot of my, uh, well, any recent purchase is only buy products if they support uh, a new standard, which is called Matter. And then you can actually add it to Google Home without having to factory reset it, as it actually does work with both Google Home and Apple Home at the same time. Uh, once you've done that, you can also then invite your other household members to the Google Home app via the settings in the app. But again, unfortunately, you do have to go through and recreate any automations or scenes because you are literally starting from scratch again. Now, one more. This one has been quite challenging, and this is one issue that I'm still dealing with today, which is using sign in with Apple, which allows you to sign into websites without needing to store you know, any credentials. It's a bit of a vault. However, you can see all the websites you've used sign in with Apple with. Now for this, you need to head over to account.apple.com and you can then click on sign in with Apple and you'll get a list of all the websites and all the email addresses that they have on record for you, including if you've used Apple's like private email to hide your real email address from the website, you can actually see where that email would be forwarded to. Now you might see there's a button called stop using sign in from Apple. But from my testing, this doesn't always work like you would kind of hope and it may even lock you out of that website as well. So instead, I would try signing into that website first and just see if you can link another social account or actually set an account password. Now this would let you use like sign in with Google instead or just a normal password, which again, store it in your password manager, which might actually be better if you think you may switch again, just so you're not tied to one service or another. Speaking much earlier of advanced data protection, now for the security conscious amongst us, you may want to, you know, fully end-to-end -end encrypt your data with Google like you can with Apple's data protection, at least for now. Now, Google does offer a solution they call advanced protection. However, it doesn't do the same as Apple's advanced data protection, and it actually stops you using many third-party apps to access Google services. So if you use a, you know, a third-party email client, for example, then enabling this will mean you will have to find uh, alternative email clients that does work with their advanced protection or just go back to using the stock Google apps. But unfortunately, there is no like-for-like -like option within Google to use end-to-end -end encryption for all of your data like there is with Apple, at least for now. Now, let me know, by the way, if you like a video on finding alternatives for the Apple stock apps. Otherwise, that is everything. Let me know if I've missed anything down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope this was useful for you. Now, once you are set up on your new Android phone, check out my video on the latest accessories and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.